So I know that you're motivated to start your own business and you're driven to be your own boss and create independent work for yourself. But I also know that one of the biggest frustrating questions that you've been trying to grapple with is figuring out what business you should be really starting. Now, know that you're not alone. It's certainly the first primary question I had when I started my own entrepreneurship journey almost seven and a half, eight years ago. And it's the most common question most of my clients ask in order to have the confidence to actually launch a business. And so this video today is really, I wanna be covering for you. How do we find the sweet spot for the right business idea for you. Now, your sweet spot is something that you're good at, something that you like doing, and something that people will pay you for. And even though that sounds easy enough, it might be quite difficult to potentially be evaluating and assessing your own skill sets to figure out what that sweet spot pinpoint will be for you. So I'm gonna cover this in today's video. We're gonna talk about what the sweet spot means, how you can start actually looking at the three areas of a sweet spot that's most important in finding a meaningful business idea. So I can't wait for you to join me. For those of you who are new here, I'm Lydia Lee. I'm a work reinvention coach and a small business strategist. And I help people just like you to transition out of their corporate gigs into launching their dream business. And specifically, a business that is designed from your strengths, your values, and your personality. So don't miss out on new video episodes that I release every week and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell button to be the first to know. And if you wanna dive deeper with me, you might wanna join my free complimentary four steps to launch a business you love training that's going to walk you through the framework that I've been teaching for the last seven years to help you with the necessary steps and really simple and uncomplicated steps to start launching the business that you love today. All right, so let's dive right into what I mean by the sweet spot for the meaningful work that you wanna do that helps you to discover the business you really wanna start. So here's a quick diagram, right? If you're a visual person, this would be a nice one to look at right now. And I really define the sweet spot in these three areas, right? The first area here on the left-hand side is your mastery. These are your skills, your gifts, your talents that we wanted to account for to ensure that you are using your best skills to move forward with in your business. The second column on the right here is your deep interests. Now, if you're someone that gets a bit daunted by the word passion, deep interests is might be an alternative word that could be more meaningful for you to absorb. <laughs> and deep interest is something that you are, yeah, perhaps passionate about, but you also have an interest in growing more with that work to learn more and educate yourself more. You can really see your body of work really growing into the future. And the last column here at the bottom here is impact. Now, if you're someone that really needs purpose, and a profitable business, right? But purpose being one of the key heartbeats in how you wanna feel about your work, then creating an impact, having transformation that's behind your work and knowing why you're starting the work that you're starting will be important for you to realize this piece so that when you're choosing between business ideas that you're ensuring that the transformation and the impact that you will be creating with your work does um, you know, tap into a cause, a movement, right? Um, something that you're really proud of that you wanna be contributing to. All right, let's dive into mastery because this is the first piece that most people will take inventory on because to be honest, it's probably been quite a while since we have analyzed what our career has looked like, what's been on our resume, what are things that we used to love doing and maybe don't love it so much anymore, or where has your skills potentially have grown into that you want to start redefining where your body of work should be, right? Being created in the next chapter of work. Now with mastery, Mastery is things that you are already really good at existing at the moment, right? And you want to look at your skill sets with kind of a neutral position to start with, right? So what I usually recommend is take out a couple of sticky notes, use a wall in your home, and start to just write down what are some of the things that you know how to do. Now, it's easier for you to go back on track to kind of figure out from your body of work so far in your resume. You might go through job by job that's in your resume so far and start to really list out what are the things that being paid to do? Where have people have told me that these are my strengths? And what have I actually been doing that have caused amazing results for the company I work for, right? Or however you have utilized 
those skills. And just do a quick brain dump. Don't worry too much right now about what they all mean, uh, but just do that brain dump, take that inventory and see what you get. Now, another caveat here I want to put is that your skills and your mastery and your strengths aren't only um, from your resume. There's lots of people that start businesses from personal achievements that they have accomplished. So look at your personal life. Look at the milestones in your life. What have you accomplished in your personal life that maybe you've never been paid to do before, but is actually quite a valuable strength. People have been asking you about it. Maybe you've been giving out free advice <laughs> to your neighbors, to your community, to your friends, and that might be a consideration that you may think about as a business. So again, on a different column, maybe a different part of the wall, take a different color sticky notes and write down some of the accomplishments, things that you've learned how to do. Maybe you've been a parent that have learned how to parent well. Maybe you're someone that's changed careers quite often and you've found a way to do that with ease and confidence, right? What are some things that are not perhaps on your resume that you've learned how to do in real life, right? The school of hard knocks, school of reality, is also a credential, right? It's also something that you could totally be using as a business. Now, the next step after that is taking a look at this wall, right? Of all the things you know how to do and just give yourself a moment of, you know, look at that. I do know a few things. I have been paid to do a few things and I've accomplished a few things in my lifetime so far. And then I want you to look at all of them and maybe take a highlighter or you might start moving the sticky notes around to a different column, if that helps visually, is to discern, right, what you know how to do and what you actually want to do. Now, in our years of being in corporate, there's been times that we entered an industry believing that we want to do something very specific. And then as we started to learn, as we started to get experience, right, however long amount of years that you've been in corporate, you've started to realize there are certain areas, perhaps, in your niche, in your industry, in your vocation, that you enjoy more than others. That's a really important piece because a business that you love and a meaningful business you'll actually want to keep means that you are actually doing stuff that you want to do versus things that you think you have to do. Take a look at maybe looking at your corporate job at the moment, that there are aspects of your job that you love and don't love, or even opportunities that you've not been given at the job you're currently at right now, that if you were given that opportunity, you would do that way better. But it just wasn't in the scope of work. It wasn't in your job description, right? But if you were in charge, if you had full autonomy over how you would like to give the most value with the skill sets you've got, where could you bring those skills? Where could you repurpose those skills potentially? And this is where I want you to kind of think about some of your, you know, use some of your creative muscle, right? To look at those things. So for example, when I was in corporate, I was doing a lot of sales and business development and I was having to align myself with the philosophies and the brand and how they want to do things. But there's certain things I didn't agree with, you know, certain things that I wasn't able to do or allowed to do because that wasn't the protocol that wasn't in the SOP, right, of that company. But if I had to redefine my role, if I looked at the ways that I have served more valuably to my customers or partnered with people or trained my team or whatever it was that I did that felt really valuable and meaningful for me, but I wasn't really allowed to do that as often because it wasn't in my job description, I would probably want to note that down because when you get to launch your own business, you get to decide what the scope of work is for you. So I just want you to take a pause and just really look at what you know how to do, which is your huge brainstorm, and then discern that and minimize that to things that you actually really enjoy doing, or is a skill set that wasn't harnessed properly the right way and nurtured well in corporate. And if you were to do that over again, you could potentially have more interest, right? And uh, much more energy to want to do that work. Another way to look at your skills is also maybe theming your skills together. Certain skills go well together. Certain skills, actually, you don't have to pick one thing that you actually infuse in your business. What makes you powerful and what makes you a best, the best business owner and to offer, you know, ideal values to your customers, actually, when you can combine skills to create even bigger value for people that you want to potentially be working for, right? Or working with. So think about skills that go together. Think about skills that uh, might have looked like they don't go together in corporate, but you could really see that, hey, when these skills have been combined for yourself and for others in past history, this has become a really powerful weapon of choice for you. 
right? Just take your stab at theming some of these skills and seeing what skills can be powerfully combined together to offer even more value potentially in a business. Now, again, at this stage, you still don't know what the business idea is. We're just taking inventory of mastery, Think inventory of mastery of things you want to do and you are really good at. Now, another video that might be a great follow-up to this video to watch as well to do with mastery and skill sets is my video I'm going to pop up up there in the cards is what business should I start? How to repurpose your current skills into a business. You might want to also watch that video that dives deeper into discerning and taking inventory of your skills that could be really helpful for you in this round of the game. All right, so the second part of your sweet spot, as I mentioned before in the diagram, is your deep interest, what you're passionate about, what you could have deep interest in that has longevity for your work. And most importantly, it's actually an area, a focus of an area of interest that you can deploy or redeploy your current skill sets towards that will bring new meaning to your skills. Okay, so when I think about deep interest and when I think about where can you put your skills, maybe it's not the same industry that you worked for for many years in corporate. It might be a completely different industry. It might be a different client. It might be a different audience. And sometimes by changing who you help can absolutely bring new life to the skill sets that you've got. So for example, I work with a lot of financial uh, experts, people that work in banks, people are, that are accountants, and they got a little bored of, you know, continually filling the pockets of big corporations, <laughs> but their knowledge and wealth of wisdom with money, hugely important in the world, right? And if they start to choose who to help, maybe it's not the banks anymore, maybe it's not the big corporations, it's actually everyday people looking to gain control back of their money, looking to budget properly, looking to grow their money, all of a sudden it's more meaningful to help people like that. And that's more meaningful to your heart. So not changing again what you, you're good at, but actually just changing who you help and why you're helping, right? So deep interest is really important in longevity of our businesses because if we're deeply interested in the topics that we are teaching, that we're mentoring on, that we're consulting on, right? Whatever the model of a business you might choose, it's gonna keep your energy and your focus in the game because you're not going to count down the clock on when you're studying or reading more books about that topic. You're not like, oh my God, when's this going to be over? Because this is like pulling teeth. When you're deeply interested in a topic, you're obsessed with it. You want to read more about it. You're probably implementing it a lot in your life naturally, right? So all of that really builds the asset of knowledge and your wealth of wisdom, right? To do more in your business and to be a much more sought after expert in due time in your business, right? For your clients. So really think about if I'm gonna use my skill sets, use my strengths, use my know-how today, what problem do I wanna solve? What problems can I think about in my community, in my network, in the ecosystem I already belong to, right? Which are maybe, um, you know, where, where your you know, associations, organizations, churches, community centers, right? Uh, groups that you belong to. These might be where the people are hanging out that you actually really want to help <laughs> and you're really familiar with them, right? Because you're already a part of these ecosystems, which is a really great place to start, right? So Thinking about problems is really important because a business is built to solve a problem. So you need to be able to deploy your skill sets to solve a particular problem that people need. And starting with who you know and starting with people you're familiar with, very likely like you, right? That's a good place to maybe do a little market research on, a couple interviews, talk to these people about their problems, right? And see where you're deeply interested to really help when it comes to these problems. Now, you don't have to help with every single problem under the moon, but you might, when you do that market research, when you actually go out there and talk to people, right, that might be needing your skill sets, that might be needing a purpose for someone like you, you'll start to find out there are many problems to be solved. There's lots of things that people need help with when it comes to a particular sector or a problem. Um, and you can choose, right, where you want to help and what are the things that you want to deep dive in and really present your skill sets for that specialty, right? So how do you find these interviews? How do you conduct these interviews? Well, I filmed a completely different video um, a couple months ago that you might want to watch, and I'm going to put it up again in the cards above, uh, which is how to market research when you don't have an audience yet, right? What questions you should be asking? How do you conduct uh, validation, <laughs> right? How do you conduct a validation 
experience for your idea, for what you think you might be interested in helping with, and by talking to other humans and knowing how to do this before you actually start a business at all. It's going to save you a lot of time and save you a lot of money, right, in doing something that's validated with real humans before you actually launch a business. So check out that video for sure to get more insight on that. And the final little puzzle piece for that sweet spot for the right business to start for you, and of course, meaningful work that you actually really wanna do, is the whole notion of impact. Now, if you're someone that's built like me, where I don't have any energy to wake up in the morning and work on my business, uh, if I don't feel purposeful, if I don't feel like it's contributing to something that I care about, and that's just how I'm built, and maybe you're built that way as well. Ultimately, impact is what helps us to think less about ourselves and more about other people. And when we have the responsibility and accountability to better other people's lives, we feel motivated and energized to do better work in our businesses, right? So impact is a pretty important component in longevity again, sustainability, and loving your work and being proud of your work, which I think is pretty important, you know, for us as individuals. So impact, what does that mean to you and your business when you think about choosing the right business idea and looking at where your skills and your deep interests can intersect with impact as well? Well, we want to think beyond what happens when people are done with you, when people are finished working with you. Because your transformation in what you do for people has a ripple effect. There's, you know, a sort of ripple effect in the ocean of what they're now able to do now that they have worked with you and have gained some knowledge and information or support from you. And now they can do these bigger things. And what are those bigger things that you want to actually be contribute towards, right? Or contributing towards. So I'll give you an example for my own business. Now, I am someone that helps people to transition from corporate, figure out what their strengths are, right? Repurpose that into a business they love and then helping them to launch a business. That's the obvious thing steps I teach in my business and in my coaching programs. However, what is the thing that gets me up in the morning <laughs> and the thing that I love seeing and the proud thing that I'm contributing to when I see people launching their own businesses is really, I know that they're now starting to be more conscious and present to intentionally building their careers and their businesses to align with their life with what they want to happen with their life. Now, I live a pretty unconventional life and I travel a lot, I live in Bali. Um, I'm, I'm really doing a lot of things that my mother isn't always very happy with me doing as a traditional Asian mother, uh, but it's what makes me happy and it's not on the conventional route. And so when I see people choosing their own path, when I see people having the autonomy and the trust and self-belief in that they can create that reality for themselves through work, and how work can contribute to a life they can lead and a lifestyle design that they really actually want to be living by, that's really cool for me. And for people who are living lives where they don't have to wonder who's going to take care of my kids and my, if I'm at work or, you know, the cost of uh, daycares for kids when I'm at a full-time job or worrying as a mom, uh, a new mom that I'm on maternity leave and someone might steal my job, you know, I can eradicate some of those fears that I don't agree with in society that has not supported people in having jobs and a life, you know, that's the ripple effect that I know my work can do. And to me, if people are happier, if they are content and have control over their lives a bit more than just in a corporate gig, they're just going to be better people in the world and they'll be kinder to each other and they themselves will do better work in the world and impact more people, right? So that's my why. That's the impact that ties my skills, my strengths, my passions together into having a bigger message to share, right? And so you want to think about that. What is the ripple effect of these business ideas you might be choosing or thinking and contemplating about when you start combining these skills into some deep interests, right? What, what do you want to really, what's the message behind your work? Who are you really wanting to support and why does that really matter to you, right? That's going to be really important to get clear for yourself to, again, allow you to want to invest in this work and commit to this work. But most importantly, it's what attracts people to your work. It's what attracts people to the values that you stand for and the philosophies that you really believe in, right? Um, and so how do you, how, how will you know this impact? What, how, you know, it's hard to know what the transformation is like when you're standing in front of a sticky note wall and figuring out what can my work be doing? So one of the things that I teach a lot in my programs and in my YouTube channel as well is the power of beta testing, power of testing out ideas, 
giving yourself a self-made internship to do this work and immerse in this work and let yourself have a have an experience of actually how do you impact people it might not be the obvious stuff you think about it might be other life-changing things that can happen from that experience that until you do a real human to human experience you're never going to know what that impact could really be so can you test this before you launch can you test this before you start a website? Can you do a lot of this work actually while you're still working a full-time job and using this as a side hustle project? Definitely. So if you want to learn how to validate your ideas and actually test, use the power of beta testing to validate your business idea before you launch or quit your job or right pull go all in into a business idea, you might want to check out my other video that I filmed. I'll put it on the cards above as well, uh, which is how to validate your ideas or business idea before you launch. It's going to walk you through the power of internships and why it's important to test and how to test your ideas uh, before you go all in with something. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some um, clarity and an overview and outline, right, of what the sweet spot is, because I know that you're not just interested to start any business, right? You don't want to create just another job for yourself. So taking that time before you decide on anything to actually do this work, to take that inventory, take that pause for a minute before you decide on what's the business idea I should go for is take that assessment of what we talked about today. And I think you're going to find it really, really valuable for you to figure out what is the right business idea for you. That's meaningful to start today. That is profitable and also purposeful. Now, do you have any questions for me after watching this video or maybe doing some of these exercises I prompted you on today? Please share with me at the comments below. I would love to hear from you and I answer all the messages personally. And I can't wait to see you on our next video. Talk to you soon.